morning, just arriving to the hospital. Not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing, but hopefully we get some sort of orientation today. Jennifer is on Optho and Talise is joining me on Gen Surge. So this is what I grabbed before I round. I have my patient list, my stethoscope, my ID, two pens, a little notebook to keep notes and like a checklist of things to do, plus scrubs, and then also my phone, which I'm filming on. In my world, I don't worry, darling. I just smile, cause you're by my side. Good morning, it is another day on general surgery. I just got to the hospital. I'm here to round and then we're doing rounds with our attending, so I really gotta be on top of it in terms of knowing my patients. Hello, so we just finished rounds. It went well. There was a lot of teaching, a lot of learning. I felt like maybe I didn't know my patients as well as I should have, but you know, we tried. Talise was also there. Talise, how did you feel about the rounds today? Uh, I feel like you were very prepared and did great. <laughs> how did you feel about rounds though? <laughs> Uh, I think it was a rough start, but eventually we got the information that needed to be out there, out there, so. Leave me here all alone. I'll be waiting. We can make it because I know. So you may be wondering, what is general surgery? I would say that in the context of modern medicine, the term general surgeon, it's really a bit of a misnomer because it implies that general surgery isn't really a specialty. However, general surgeons are the professionals when it comes to dealing with anything to do with the GI system and the associated structures in the abdomen. They also do breast surgery, they can do neck surgery if they're doing thyroid surgery, and they can cut out lumps and bumps anywhere in the body. So as a medical student on general surgery, there are four main areas of the hospital that you can find me. One is in the operating room, helping out with surgeries and learning how to do surgeries. Second is on the ward, which is where patients go after surgery if they're admitted to hospital. Third place you can find me is in scopes. This is a clinic where we put cameras up people's bums and down their throats to look at the inside of their digestive system. And the fourth place you can find me is in the emergency. All right, so it is 6 a.m. and I need to round on all my patients before surgery and typically I try to be done around 7, 7.30 so that I can see the patient in pre-op and be all prepared for their procedure. Basically rounding is checking in on them and writing soap notes. So writing how their night went, if they're having nausea or vomiting, and then doing a quick physical exam to see if anything is going wrong and then potentially ordering stuff that they might need. Hello, so I just finished a consult in the ER for a general surgery patient. It was a great exercise in doing my physical exam and presenting to my attending. My attending is at home, so we present over the phone. This attending, I am a little intimidated by, so I was quite nervous while presenting, but he's actually really lovely, he's very nice. He just has like a reputation of being quite intense, so I was scared. <laughs> It's 3.45 in the morning and I'm off to see a patient. So my plans to sleep were foiled. Good morning, today is Tuesday. I'm so tired, you guys. I'm here, I'm gonna go around on my patients and then I have a day in the OR. So I've got my laptop here, just doing a little bit of late night studying. Probably gonna head to bed soon. Current time is 9.33. I have to say, surgery is not a rotation where you get a lot of sleep. So the plan, I think tomorrow will be to get there fairly early. Maybe like 5.30, maybe 6. I'm so tired, my brain is not working. Good morning, today is Wednesday, so I'm on call today, which means I'm mostly looking after the ward and any issues and then seeing any consults as they come in. The other med student is in the OR today, and then the resident and the fourth year med student are post calls, so they're headed home pretty soon. I have migrated to my call room, and actually this is quite pleasant. I'm lying in bed, just on my laptop, reading. It actually feels quite nice. I won't be mad if I get called because, you know, I'm awake. It's fine. So I'm just going to stay up and study until I can't study anymore.
Goodbye, sweet bed. I have to head to the emergency now to do a consult, so I will be back in a bit. Hello, so today's Sunday. Yesterday we put up the Christmas tree and some Christmas lights. Ugh, oh, it's just feels good to have some holiday lights going on. I feel like my mood really needed it. I have been a grouchy Oscar the Grouch as of late. So today I have set aside basically the entire day to work on my presentation for the general surgery rounds. I have been putting this off like all week because it stresses me out. If I'm being honest, it gives me like palpitations thinking that I need to present on a topic that is interesting to all of the general surgeons as well as educational. Like what on earth am I gonna know that they don't already know? So this is what my slides look like. I have a little handy dandy timeline of what the patient went through and then teaching points from this case. Anyways, I need to go to bed because I am on call again tomorrow, which I feel like I was just on call. So it's 4.04, presentation is at 4.30. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Okay, so I just finished my presentation. Oh, I feel so good about it. Not that it was like amazing or anything, but I just feel good that it's done. Okay, grab yourself a cup of tea. It is story time, general surgery edition. Also, if you are grossed out easily, a little squeamish, don't really like toes, maybe skip ahead to this time stamp. So nothing makes me more excited than getting to do lots of cutting, lots of cauterizing, and lots of sewing and suturing in the operating room, which is why I'm so excited about this story. It all started with a toe. Not just any toe, but the great toe. Yeah, literally your big toe is known as the great toe. I don't know why, but I always imagine it like wearing a crown, being like, I'm the great toe, and all the other toes like worship it. Anyways, that is not important. Let me tell you about this necrotic toe that I got to amputate. So patient profile is this elderly man with poorly controlled diabetes, generally just really unhealthy and bad peripheral arterial disease. So as you can imagine, the blood flow to his feet was suboptimal. And the victim of this poor blood circulation was his great toe. It was completely black, like charcoal black. And not only that, the bone was sticking out. When you have an open, non-healing wound like this in your foot that progressively just gets worse, you're at a huge risk of infection and even limb loss. So we treat that with amputation. And when you're amputating, usually the limb that you're amputating is kind of like a lost cause. So it's not a very delicate or precise type of operation. And if you combine that with a keen medical student, it creates a wonderful opportunity to do lots in the operating room. Hence my excitement. So long story short, I got to chop off this toe. But this toe was so disgusting. It's disgusting to the point where I'm like, ugh, I wanna gag just thinking about it, but also so disgusting that it's cool and I can't stop thinking about it if you know what I mean. Basically, amputating a toe isn't anything crazy. The bone was just like disintegrating. There wasn't much to it. I took a scalpel and cut around the skin and then cauterized and dissected out all the dead tissue inside the toe. It was just like this macerated, mushy, brownish, purple mess. But not only that, like the toe was just full of pus. It was like this milky, thick, greenish yellow pus, like pudding, but it smelled oh, so bad. It smelled disgusting. It just, that scent penetrated the mask like none other. So after cutting through the skin, debriding all of the dead tissue, getting rid of all the pus, we get to the bone and the bone is just like this brittle, soft, thing that we took with like these plier type things and just kind of crunched the bone and ripped it out. And after that, the toe was gone. <laughs> after removing the toe, we just very lightly placed a few sutures to approximate the skin. But with this type of tissue, you don't want it tight. You don't want to cut off any circulation because circulation is so limited to begin with. And then we bandaged it up and that was my first big independent operation. I chopped off the toe and it was gross. Anyways, back to the vlog. 
So I'm just getting ready to head back to the ward for tuck-in rounds. It's 9 p.m. Tuck-in rounds is basically what it sounds like. You're tucking the patients in, not literally, but basically checking in with the nurses to make sure nothing funky is going on, or if there are any issues, hopefully you can nip them in the bud and not get called at midnight. So it is 10.30 p.m. I'm going to head to bed. I'm really hoping, really hoping I can sleep through the entire night. Or if I don't sleep, I hope I get waked up for something. Waked up? Hi. I know English. I hope I get woken up for something interesting such as an ER consult or a patient that has to go to the OR. The things that, like, I don't enjoy getting woken up for, which is why talking rounds are really helpful, but sometimes you just can't predict the future, is really basic ward things. Sometimes it's like, can this patient eat a cracker? Can this patient have gravel? This patient has urine in their bladder but hasn't peed. Can we do an in and out catheter? For some reason, you have to write an order for that. So that means that I, as a medical student, have to wake up, leave my warm bed in my call room, walk all the way down one tower, across the main part of the hospital, head all the way up a different tower, up to the surgical ward, so that I can write an order on a piece of paper. Yeah. And then you're like, wow, I'm tired. Good morning. Guess who slept all through the night? So I just have to do my rounding in the morning and then we are off for the rest of the day. So I'm leaving the hospital now and it's with a bit of a heavy heart. One of the patients we've been following for a while had a big surgery and is not doing well postoperatively and the surgeon thinks they're probably going to die in hospital. Which is hard because every day when we round on them it just feels like we're watching them slowly die in front of our eyes and there's not much we can do. I think medicine is a very fine balance between staying human, but not getting overly attached. Sitting by myself and wondering Why the only bliss I feel is from the things that are in real I want to know Given the chance to change it all, would I give in or would I fall? So, the patient I had been speaking about earlier this week, I think is going to pass away tonight. Um, I went in and spoke to their significant other and basically told them the plan for the night and that we would just be giving pain meds and that we would kind of stop everything else. It was one of the most sad yet rewarding things that I've ever done. I wish put it all on pause. Wait a minute till the storm comes down. So it's midnight. I'm just waiting around because we're gonna be operating on a patient later tonight. So yeah. Just trying to stay awake. I'm excited for the operation though. I think it'll be I think it'll be a good one. It's for a newly diagnosed cancer of the bowel. Not actually diagnosed, but that's what we think it is, and it's causing a large bowel obstruction. So we need to relieve that before the bowel perforates. Hi. I just had one of the best days. I think today was the best day of clerkship so far. I'm on call for general surgery. It's 3.45 in the morning and I'm full of energy, full of life. I just, I just love surgery so much. We just finished a procedure in the OR for like a bowel obstruction. So we resected the bowel, made a colostomy. We did something called the Hartman's procedure. There's something magical about operating in the middle of the night. I got to do so much in the OR today, which was such a highlight. I got to use the scalpel, I got to use the cautery, I got to dissect things, I got to sew deep layers of the fascia, I got to sew on the bowel. Those things are delicate and they're like, usually they don't let med students touch the bowel. 
but I got the like suture parts of it. I can't even form words right now with how happy I am. Good morning, today is Sunday. I realize I look like a worm with a hat, but I'm too shy to vlog like an actual person. But um, yeah, just on call today. It's been so long since I've seen the sun. This is so nice. Good morning, today is Wednesday. I'm in the OR, but first I need to round on my patients. Oh my God, my joints are so sore. These are the Christmas tree lights outside our hospital. So pretty. We just did two appendectomies. One was open, one was laparoscopic. For the open one, I got to do pretty much all of the cutting and sewing, which was awesome. It's 3.50 in the morning. I am heading to bed. So this brings us to the end of my general surgery rotation. As you can tell, I've had so much fun. There have been very high highs, very low lows. This is probably the least amount of sleep that I have gotten since clerkship started, but it's also the most fun that I've had. Alrighty, so I just finished my last call shift on surgery. I had so much fun this rotation. Ugh, I'm struggling again. Anyways, that's the end of this vlog. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!